Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sumera Abdi, and joining me soon will be my colleague Prashant Nair as well. For the market, we're now down about a half or percent, but through the day, actually, it's been a session of weakness. Though we're off of the lows for now, but nevertheless, uh, the mood appears to be quite somber. Uh, the mid-cap index, which was, uh, you know, a tad bit better off, actually, than the frontliners, that too has now, uh, you know, picked up pace. So there as well, now we're seeing a cut of about a half or percent. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the market breadth also, if you look at it, there are almost two stocks which are declining on the NSC as against uh, every stock that is advancing. So that as well remains a factor which is worrying and it just goes to sort of show you uh, uh, you know, the mood in the market. But in terms of what's not doing well, of course, the big loser right now on the index is Yes Bank. So that's now down about two and a half or percent. But Reliance TCS remain the big worry spots. But uh, first up, these are our top stories. The market is marginally off the day's low, but still in week, uh, trading week on rising crude oil prices and continued border skirmishes. Losses in heavyweights, Reliance and TCS Way. Crude sensitives, Asian paints, oil marketing companies also under pressure. The mid-cap index also falls in line. The Dr. Reddy stock holds up in an otherwise weak market after the US FDA lifts the warning letter at the Duwada unit, changing its status to voluntary action initiated. Yes, Bank, though, comes under fire from RBI for disclosing details of the confidential risk assessment report. The Jet Airways stock surges on continued debt reduction plans. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the company is planning a rights issue to raise about 4,000 crore rupees. And there's relief for the Anil Ambani led Reliance Group. Management reaches an in principle standstill agreement with over 90% of their lenders, under which they will not sell any of the shares pledged by the promoters till the 30th of September. An SBI chairman says current model of promoter funding via pledging of shares needs to be re-looked at. Banking industry veterans add that refinancing promoter loans over the next 15 months may become a challenge. All right, uh, those are our top stories, but let's focus on some stocks. And the stock on our radar now is PFC. Today, on the back of the CCI's approval of the company's acquisition of 52% stake in REC, the company has also declared Q3 numbers. So to discuss all of that, joining in now, we have Rajiv Sharma, the chairman and MD of the company. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, you've said that the purchase of the REC stake will be funded via debt. So could you tell us to begin with how much debt are you likely to actually take on for this? Quantum, we can't tell you at this moment because final call will be taken by the committee chaired by Honorable Finance Minister. But broadly, we are working on this deal. We will fund this deal through debt from the market and from our, our repayments from the, our existing assets. Okay. Uh, so you've indicated that the acquisition will impact your capital ratio, but you will also look to address this. So could you give us a sense of, you know, what the plan is in this area? In Q3, you must have seen that our capital adequacy has increased to 19%. But we are still working on various fronts to increase this capital adequacy. Number one, we are in touch with various banks to get tier two capital. This is one. Second, state government guaranteed loans. Earlier, we were not expediting these state government guarantees, but now it is being monitored regularly at my level and various states are sending those state government guarantees. So risk weight comes down to 20% in government guaranteed advances. Three, strong profitability. If you have seen our nine months profit after tax growth almost 75%. So it will also increase my capital adequacy. Similarly, ongoing projects we are regularly monitoring so that they are commissioned faster. Once it is commissioned, risk weight comes down to 50 percent. Uh, Mr. Sharma, you've indicated certain synergies post the acquisition, but will the companies be integrated as one entity sometime in the future? I am fully convinced because I have been chairman for five years of REC also. There is total synergy in 
these two companies merger. Initially it will be acquisition and later they will be merged and it will help number one. It will help the government in implementing various initiatives and to improve financial health of state power utilities through uniform scheme of reduction of AT&C losses by putting various conditions on state power utilities once it will be a single entity. Number two, in most of the private sector projects, we are consortium partner with REC. So there will be a single approach, synchronous approach in resolution of stressed assets. Three, REC is a dominant player in funding transmission and distribution and PFC is a dominant player in funding generation projects. So both of us will be learning from each other through these strengths and we will be having a common lending policy, common borrowing policy and we will be getting cheaper funds from the market. We will not be competing in the international market with each other. Okay, uh, Mr. Sharma, now let's talk about your earnings. We've seen good loan growth of about 13.7%. NIMS are at 3.42%. Uh, so could you give us a sense of what we can expect in Q4 and also the outlook for FY20? Loan growth has been 14% and it will continue to grow like that because our share in renewable space is increasing. It has to further increase. We are also funding in new areas like waste to energy plants. We have funded f one project in Nagpur for sewage plant treatment also the water will be supplied to thermal plant. We are also funding for smart grid projects. We have also funded a large project irrigation project in Telangana. So, since conventional coal, coal based projects are not many now under consideration or under appraisal, but in other areas, other avenues we are exploring and sanction is increasing, advisor disbursement will increase and growth will continue. And NIMS also, sir? Yeah, NIM has increased this time and I, shall, I think it will continue to increase. We will be able at least to maintain the same. Okay, Mr. Sharma, so NIMS will be maintained, but you have also increased your forex borrowings and lowered your cost of funds. What is the domestic forex liability by mix uh, that you are targeting going forward? Once I joined PFC, f my first target was that I have to in diversify my borrowing. So in that direction, I made sincere efforts. First of all, I increased our borrowing, foreign currency borrowing from 3% to 12%. Second, for many years, PFC was trying to get cap 54 EC capital gain tax bonds. So with efforts of Ministry of Power and efforts of our officers, we got last July the approval for raising funds under 54 EC also and it is gradually increasing. So it is a cheaper fund and around 500 crores we are getting through 54 EC now. And from banks also we have increased our borrowing because the, this bond market is a little tight but we have various options available in the market and I am sure with our continuous efforts and endeavors, we will be able to reduce our cost of fund as we have done already. Our yield has also increased and the spread has also increased to 2.68%.
Okay, um, so given INDAS, so we're likely to see some volatility in the reported numbers because of forex exposure. So what's the size of um, your open or unhedged exposure and what is the net impact that uh, we can foresee for Q4 and FY20? It is almost 60% is already hedged. And if you take into consideration more than 10 years, so it is 80% hedged. Okay, were there some uh, provision write backs in Q3 and what's the size of recoveries and write backs uh, that you're seeing, uh, you know, in Q4 and FY20? Yeah, you rightly mentioned that 52% provisioning has already been made, but we are getting a positive response from the market for resolution of stressed assets. For your kind information, Number one, Ratle Hydro project we have resolved with the present developer GVK and for last 11 months they are regularly paying to us. And next quarter Q4 we will be able to reverse around 600 crores provisioning on this account. This is one. Second is Sedance Energy and SIGA. We have received good offers. We will be recovering 100% of our principal. So we have to run Swiss challenge on this offer. Similarly, in SR transmission, we are likely to get 100% principal. We have already finalized this resolution of GMR Chhattisgarh. Our board has already approved. And this under Shasakt also, now 66% lenders, if they come on board, we will be able to resolve this Amravati project of India Bulls. We have already run this Swiss challenge and we are likely to get a good rate. Okay, so Mr. Sharma, you're mentioning a lot of accounts like JMR, GVK as well as ESA put together. How much do these add up to? very difficult to quantify, but I am sure at least 50% of the stressed asset we should be able to resolve within the next three, four months. Conclude, I would say. All right, Mr. Sharma, we leave it at that for now, sir. Thanks very much uh, for joining in. So that's a confirmation coming in from PFC that the REC deal will be funded via debt. And uh, uh, also this will be dealt with uh, through the repayments from their existing assets. But quickly we need to take check of what's happening in Europe. The markets should have opened by now and my sense is uh, that the opening would be positive uh, given the hope that's floating around the US-China trade deal. Remember all of last week uh, there were some positive developments there. Uh, you know there are some indications that perhaps the deadline could be pushed back a little bit. The teams will meet again this week and around those hopes uh, European markets opening a tad bit uh, in the green though the footsie is just about tepid. We'll take a quick break, come back with more in a bit. Stay tuned.